After two hot sunny days this holiday weekend, the clouds have returned and in some places the rain is falling hard. Yeah, you can see a lot of green right there on the radar. So let's get right over to Evan who's tracking all of the wet weather. That's right. We started the day with a little bit of sunshine, but those clouds rolled in. The rain has moved in from south to north and it's been overspreading the region as we've gone through the afternoon. You can see some of the more moderate rain across North Carolina and even in advance of it, we had a few heavier downpours and notice that rain slowly making its way off towards the north right now, looking at mainly just some light showers across much of the south side and the peninsula it does pick up in intensity once you get back across North Carolina with some more moderate showers along the Albemarle Sound. And as we look off towards the south, South, we have subtropical storm Alberto coming ashore near Laguna Beach, Florida right now. Storm is starting to show some signs of weakening as that northern half of the storm is now over land. But as we mentioned last week, a lot of times with subtropical systems right through here, that heaviest of the rain is on the north and east side. And with the storm expected to track up through the Ohio and Tennessee River valleys, we'll be on the eastern side of it. So for the next several days, we are looking at showers and thunderstorms as some of that tropical moisture works its way off towards the north. Cloudy skies, we've got the showers. This is our camera up in Hampton right now at the Virginia Air and Space Center, 74 degrees. We're looking at the rain. Temperatures pretty much in the 70s everywhere with a few 60s along the eastern shore and the outer banks. And really for the next several hours, we're just looking at these occasional showers right through midnight. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s. Now when I come back, I'll talk about a little bit of a wet forecast coming up over the next several days. That's in just a few minutes. Evan, thank you. Taking a live look right now over a very gray Virginia Beach oceanfront. Today's weather has kept a lot of people off the beach on what's typically the start of the summer tourist season. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton is live at the beach. And Allie, what are you seeing right now? Well, Stephen, I can tell you it is not a good beach day. I was at the beach yesterday. I saw you there. It was beautiful. The sun was shining. I think I got a tan. That is not happening today. It's cold, windy, and if you take a look to the side, you can see people are actually sitting on the beach. They have their big tent hanging out under there, enjoying the day. But if you don't want to get wet without going in the water, this is not the beach day for you. Cross, cross. Just came here for, for Monday. Oh my God. From Richmond I need the ball, though. to Virginia Beach. Hey, Eddie. This group of guys oh expected a beautiful sunny day at the ocean. Yes. They got the complete opposite. Because today is just like really gloomy and dark. Memorial Day is the official start of summer, but you couldn't tell today. Just all rain practically the whole day. It's pretty disappointing which made several people pack up their belongings off the beach and head back to their hotel. Plan to get wet in the ocean, but now we're getting rained on, so we're getting wet either way. Right here. These guys <laughs> stuck it out. <laughs> put that in, put that in. So did a few other tourists. Not too sunny, but uh, it's better, better than the weather back home, so just glad to be here enjoying it. They all have the same mindset. Have fun. Hey, Eddie, Eddie. And then get back in the car and head home. Now, some people actually didn't leave just yet. A lot of people are still here on the boardwalk with their umbrellas, riding the bikes, just having a good time. They say the rain is not going to stop them. Live at the oceanfront, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now. A crime alert tonight in Portsmouth. That's where police are asking for your help finding leads in a crash that turned into a case of road rage. We're told shots were fired early Sunday morning near Turnpike Road and Corpru Drive. Police responded moments later to Depot Drive, and that's where they say two people were cut by glass that broke when a bullet came through their windshield. Police say those two were in one car that crashed into another before someone started shooting. Tonight, police are looking for this white truck that they say took off before they got to the scene. If you know anything that can help, call the crime line. Tonight, one person is recovering and deputies are looking for a suspect after a popular summertime spot turned into a crime scene. We're told a man was shot just after midnight near the Yorktown Fishing Pier. 13 News Now reporter Nico Clemens went to the scene to find out how people are reacting. Beachgoers, a little uneasy this afternoon. You really think about the place that this area used to be. It was a real family type of place. In the early hours of the morning, while many of them were asleep, 
violence made its way to Yorktown Beach. Sheriff's deputies say someone shot a 29-year-old Florida man near the fishing pier just after midnight. They've been vigilant out here today. I caught up with Teresa Johnson right by the pier. Johnson, like so many others on this Memorial Day, is enjoying the day with her family. Just a day of relaxation, enjoying the water, just chilling, hanging out. Johnson a bit disturbed after hearing what happened just hours earlier. Even going to the grocery store, you have to keep your guard up. You've always got to be looking. You always have to be watching. Violence truly is taking over, and what place is truly safe? News spread quickly at the beach. Others, like Lisa West, say violence is not common here. Shocked. <laughs> Surprised. As the search grows for the shooter, Johnson hopes this doesn't become routine at one of her favorite beaches. It's sad to hear that violence now comes to the area. And if you were close to the fishing pier this morning or nearby or know anything about the shooting, call the crime line. In Yorktown, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. Now on to our Memorial Day coverage. On this day, people across the country are coming together to pay tribute to service members who paid the ultimate sacrifice. President Trump made a traditional visit, visit to Arlington National Cemetery and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. In a solemn ceremony, he laid a wreath there and honored everyone who has died serving this country. He also shared a message to fallen service members' families. They died so that freedom could live. We cannot imagine the depth of emotion that this day brings each year. President Trump also said at Arlington that America never forgets its fallen heroes and that their legacies don't fade over time. Instead, he said they become more powerful. Here at home, members of the Berkeley community in Norfolk gathered for a remembrance ceremony at Mount Olive Cemetery. It's a place where more than 100 veterans have been laid to rest. 13 News Now reporter Megan Chin was at the memorial. She joins us now in the studio with the story. Well, Janet, there are eight public cemeteries in Norfolk. A Norfolk City spokeswoman says Mount Olive Cemetery is privately owned, so no one really knows who owns this property. But many people in the community, both young and old, showed up to honor those who paid the ultimate price serving our country. At Mount Olive Cemetery, the Berkeley community is celebrating life, honoring lives. To get together, and show that we remember them. Here to do that and remember this wonderful thing is 97 year old Josephine Scott. That, that makes it extra special because there's so many people that have not been able to make it this far. She's a member of the Berkeley Historical Society, which honored fallen service members Monday. The group also works to restore this community graveyard, which is almost 200 years old. Uh, you see a lot of the stones, they've been knocked over, uh, they're sinking. Ann Boone is the society president. She says African Americans were buried here in the 1800s instead of at other cemeteries because of segregation. So to have our chief out here, our sheriff, and we appreciate our sheriff because he keeps the grass cut. So we're cleaning them up a little bit, you know, just showing our appreciation for uh, the men and women who serve our country. So the Norfolk Sheriff, Mayor, and Police Chief joined the Berkeley community in a wreath-laying ceremony. Period. It's just all about love. That love crossing all occupations, all generations. And that love and that feeling for one another has always been. And Josephine, planning to be here again. You're going to live to be 100? <laughs> As God says so. <laughs> Well, on 13 News Now at 6, hear from current veterans and family members of those buried at the Olive uh, Memorial. In the studio, I'm Megan Shin, 13 News Now. Today in Hampton, people came out to observe Memorial Day at Fort Monroe. Dozens of people went to the National Monument for a ceremony to remember the men and women who died while serving the U.S. It included a presentation of colors and singing of the national anthem. And anyone who came to today's memorial could also bring worn, torn, or faded flags to be properly retired right on the spot. 
Right now, crews in North Carolina are working to rebuild ferry lanes on Ocracoke Island so drivers can get to the boat, their boats to Hatteras. Two of the five lanes were washed away during winter storms earlier this year. The State Department of Transportation hired contractors to rebuild those lanes and take extra steps to protect them. That includes placing sandbags down, building a sand dune, and resurfacing the lanes. The work should wrap up by the end of July. Looking ahead, the General Assembly is getting back to work this week in hopes of coming to an agreement on a state budget. The House of Delegates is set to meet Wednesday. A meeting last week was canceled because the Senate delayed a vote on the budget. Republican senators said they needed more time to study a new proposal that includes Medicaid expansion. The Senate is scheduled to meet tomorrow. If lawmakers can't agree on a budget by July 1st, the state government will shut down.